Good morning, folks. Sunday to remember as we have an update on Earth's magnetic field shift. We've also got other incredible discoveries, and we're starting with our star, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were mostly quiet. Little push from the central active region is visible in the surrounding corona, no major CME associated. Solar wind is quiet as well, and we'll have to keep watching the sunspots even before they've started flaring here. Active regions are growing, especially at high southern latitudes. Let's head out to Mars because we've got a super cool story, no matter what, and it may even be playing into the changing conditions at the other planets, which are showing as much or more climate change and magnetic field changes than Earth is. We know Mars doesn't have a global intrinsic magnetic field, but it does have crustal fields embedded across the planet. Well, they are moving. The paper hypothesized that it's the electric flows of material around the planet, but also mentioned the possibility of external magnetic field pressure. And to be honest, you would get the first one if you had the second. Martian fields shifting. Let's come over to something that technically hits the isotope fiasco, but not in terms of dating. This is in terms of temperature reconstructions. Turns out that some of the studies have been getting absurdly low paleoclimate marks, from bad samples, and that plays into both the long-term reconstructions and how they view CO2's long-term effect. At least it would if the field removed its cerebrum from its backside. Moving on to sun-like stars and binaries, they show evidence of eating nearby planets. While sun-like binary systems should be chemically identical, they say, that's simply not what they are finding. They like the planetary dinner hypothesis for those chemical signatures. Up next, we're going to the intracluster light. This is the light not from galaxies or stars, but from the regions between. And while the paper cannot make its way out of the dark matter paradigm, I bet you don't get past the abstract before the dusty plasma hypothesis starts screaming as a not-so-little voice in your head. Folks, our number one quake forecast of 2019 was that five-day warning on the California 7-pointer. Turns out here, two years later, they have identified and confirmed that those were indeed pre-seismic electromagnetic anomalies. Well, thank goodness. Now I can hop in my time machine and re-predict that quake all over again. As they refuse to actually use these things to predict quakes that are coming in the future, I feel like that was excellently veiled frustration there at the wholly retrospective research position of the field, wouldn't you say? And now on to our three top stories, starting with the thermospheric super rotation. The thermosphere spins faster around than the 24-hour Earth spin, so we call it super rotation. And here they know full well that they need to look at the electrodynamics. And beating out the ionospheric F layer density is the interaction between the neutral winds and the geomagnetic field. Yes, even though it isn't ferrous, isn't made of iron, these particles still react due to their intrinsic magnetism and the indirect electrodynamic forcing of the geomagnetic field. Up next, folks, this one's a little bit different, studying the light bounce from Earth to the moon and back, correcting with peripheral lunar surface brightness, and they've determined that our albedo is dropping. Earth is becoming less reflective, taking in more of the light, and they say there's no correlation with solar activity, even though solar activity has been dropping for that exact same period of time, so I'm not sure what they were looking at, but in reality, that's Earth's magnetic field. They weren't looking at the right thing. Folks, I have long been wondering if Earth's magnetic field weakening would have more an effect on cosmic ray cloud formation or UV light intrusion with destroyed ozone. And here, it would seem that the sun is beating out cosmic rays and taking advantage of our planet's weaker magnetic field. Now last but not least, folks, the last acceleration of the field was in 2017 over the Pacific sector. In 2020, it was global. The latest geomagnetic jerk occurred last year after the pulse began about 18 to 24 months earlier. Again, this latest one was a global shift, ground and satellite data confirm. We greatly appreciate your support. The 12,000 year magnetic excursion cycle of Earth marches on. Learn more in the disaster playlist below the video and on our channel homepage. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.